welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be using some foil and Bible journaling, plus I'm going to be using my colored pencils, but instead of blending out with the blender, I'm going to go ahead and blend out with the brush. The stamps that I'll be using is from Joy Claire, their Color by Faith series. This is a new one. It's called Living Water, and it is great not only for Bible journaling, but this is going to be great for some mail cards, birthday cards, um, anything like that. If you guys an outdoorsman, this is going to be a perfect stamp set for that. But I'm actually going to be doing some Bible journaling today. I've turned to Psalms 42, verse 1. This verse is actually included in the stamp set, so I've got it right up at the top there. Whenever I do my Bible journaling, I like to go ahead and lay everything out that I'm going to be doing. Then I just kind of pick and choose what I stamp first and move around like that. That just helps me get everything right where I need it to be, make sure I have enough room for everything, that sort of thing. Now I'm going to be using the Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. I had not used this in my Bible yet. Just to let you know, this Bible page is mostly a big experiment. It's not my greatest work and I made a lot of mistakes. I kept them all in there so you could learn from my mistakes, but basically this was just one big experiment. I hadn't used this ink in my Bible yet, so I thought I would go ahead and give it a shot. I don't think I'll be using it again. It bleeds really, really badly. I did not put a sheet behind this. I would normally suggest doing that. My brain just wasn't there that day. So I went ahead and stamped this down with some midnight ink. I like to give it a few minutes to kind of soak into the paper, really give it a good press. It stamps beautifully. It just bleeds like crazy. So right underneath that, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that big deer. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's a, just a deer. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that off to the right hand side, right underneath that stream. And again, I want to go ahead and give it a good press after I've inked it up and let it sit for a minute just to soak into the paper. Now off to the right, you'll see I have a scrap piece of paper. I stamp off my stamps before I go ahead and put them to the page and then ink them up again. That's just because they're brand new. I need to go ahead and make sure that they're going to stamp well before I stamp them. I need to, me need to make sure they've got all that leftover stuff from the manufacturing process. Sometimes it can make the ink beat up. So I just like to make sure that's all gone. I stamp that teeny tiny little guy off to the left hand side and then I clean my stamps. Now I love this Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink, but I want to go ahead and mention that this does stain your stamps. I clean these stamps very, very well. You can see they're not leaving any transfer behind, but you can still see that they're nice and black um, dyed on there. I mentioned this in the Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink video. I did um, showing what all mediums this worked with, but I didn't show how much it stained the stamps. So I want to go ahead and keep that in there. Now, once I flip this over, you can see how much this did bleed through. It even went on to the next page. That's my fault for not putting a piece of paper in there to kind of protect my surface. But I do want to mention that this bleeds really, really crazily. So I wanted to color this image or all these images in with my colored pencils. And normally I would use a blending stump to blend that out, but I wanted to try something different. I wanted to go ahead and try a brush with some OMS. I'll zoom you in closely so you can see how this works. All you do is load your brush up. I'm using a watercolor brush here and you just fill it with the OMS. Then you bring your brush over to the paper and blend it out kind of like you would any watercolor, painting medium, anything like that. You just already have your color on the paper and you're blending together that way. So I like to go ahead and go over it once, then you can come back in again. And once that solvent kind of sits on the colored pencil and it breaks it down a little bit, it gets easier to blend out. So if you don't get a great blend the first time, come back in after you've let it sit for a minute and blend again. That's really going to give you a good blend. This is not the quickest way to do this. I would say that the blending stump is quite a bit quicker, actually, but I wanted to give this a shot and see if this worked. This gives you a much softer effect, a much more, it's not as blended. You still have some of that texture left in there, which is great for these, the images I'm working on now. It's also going to be great whenever I go, go and do the grass in the little image above there. So I added some darker brown, some lighter brown to the little guy on the left hand side there. I added some pinks to their ears. And again, I'm just using that same brush to go ahead and blend all this out. Now I tried to pick up some color with my brush. That didn't work out so well. You really need to get the color on the paper and then sort of blend it out. 
Now right underneath these two little guys, I'm going to go ahead and add some blue for water as if they're standing in water. And I just used the side of my colored pencil. These are the Leisure Arts colored pencils. They work beautifully in your Bible journaling. That slick paper really helps blend them out. That's another thing that really helped with this technique is that slickness of the paper I'm working on here. It really helps the color move around. I use that colored pencil on its side to kind of go in and really give some really nice shaded color underneath it, but it was also very light, so I didn't have a whole lot of color on there. I didn't want this to be overly saturated with color, so whenever I do that and I need to fill a large space, I just like to turn my colored pencil on its side and use this side of the lead. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the green as well, filling in all that area very quickly, and then I'll just go ahead and again quickly fill this out. I did make that stream run off the left side of the paper just to make it all look a little bit more cohesive. Then I came back in and I blended in all of that green. Now this is super, super, super simple and easy coloring that I'm doing here. You could really go in and make this even more beautiful, putting a lot of time and effort into it. I've seen real artists do this technique with the brush and the OMS on like actual canvas and that kind of thing, and it looks beautiful. So you could always go that route and really go in depth. I'm coming in and adding just a little bit of detail, a little bit of shadowing underneath those deer on the bottom, coming in and adding some grass strands to the sides of the river or the stream. Then I came in and added a little bit of green to those trees, blending that out very quickly. And here's a few final pictures after everything dried. While the OMS is still on there, you're going to have a little bit of haze on there. Um, on the images, you're not going to be able to see the true color you're going to get. So let it dry and then go ahead and see how it looks. You can see it gives it a really soft effect. I love the way it looks. Now moving on to the foiling part. This is where I just completely messed up. This was really one big experiment, like I said. Um, and I knew this would work. I just didn't know how hot I needed my iron and I had it way too hot. Let's just put it that way. So I went ahead and I stamped out my verse on the top there. I'm using Versamark ink and I did prep my surface with my embossing bag. I gave that ink on the bottom or the OMS a little bit of time to dry because if that's still wet, it's going to hold on to the embossing powder and you don't want that. So I went ahead and stamped out that verse. Again, I'm using Versamark ink. I'm giving it a little bit of time to sit there and soak into the paper. Gave it a good press. Then I'll go ahead and lift that right up and I'll cover this with clear embossing powder. Now you're not going to be able to see this really well, so I zoomed you in. I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. You want to make sure your heat gun's nice and hot. And then just heat set it. Then I took some gold foil. This is from ThermoWeb. I placed it right over the top and I'm going to put a carrier sheet on top. For this one, I just used computer paper folded in half, and normally that works just fine. I want to make sure that my foil is shiny side up and covering all of that embossing on there. And then I went ahead and I had my straightener on 420. You do not want it that hot. You can see it's going to steam right at the top there. That's not a good sign. So once I pulled this off, I could see that it messed up really badly. The embossing powder just soaked into the paper. Only two little spots stuck on the actual paper. So it, it didn't work. So I went ahead, uh, really turned my straightening iron down as low as it would go. And then I went ahead and I stamped right over the top of that. Now this time again, I'm using the Versamark ink. I prepped my surface and I'm using clear embossing powder once again. It didn't, the gold foil, what was stuck, did not want to come off. You could try to scrape that off if you wanted to. But as you know, with Bible journaling, once it's on there, it's not coming off pretty much. So do your test practice on a back sheet. Don't do what I did. Now I went ahead and put some copper foil over the top of that. I used two carrier sheets. So I used a um, regular cardstock, and then I also used my printer paper. Now this worked really, really well. The only thing with stamping and foiling with embossing powder is it is, does not give you a nice detailed image. It gives you more, it flattens it out so it gets whiter. You don't want to use this for sentiments like I used it here, but I would already done it. So what I decided to do was go ahead and use it as a background. 
Again, I prep my surface and then I've got my clear stamp off to the right hand side. They're the same verse I've been using. I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up with Versamark and then look straight through and stamp that right on top of what I foiled. Now this is gonna stick beautifully. It's just gonna give you a nice background. So this is another option. If you mess up like I did, you can always use it as a background. And I stamped over that with the Versamark, dusted it with some copper embossing powder and heat set that. And there you can see the verse actually shows up nice on top of the copper or in top of the copper foiling. It all worked out in the end, but there's a few tips and tricks on foiling with your Bible journaling, what to do, what not to do, but there's a final look at the page all put together. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. I know I did. Off to the left hand side, you're going to see some videos. There are also supply links to all the supplies I use down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today and happy crafting.